We are at Hard Northern tonight for WOSN High School football action as the Polar Bears hosting the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers in what is already a key NWCC matchup here this evening on WOSN. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Darren Gilbert, I'm Patrick Kamler, and we are looking forward to a great matchup. It's uh, it's early season. It's only week four of the high school football season. Might be kind of hard to realize it already is week four, but this is already a matchup that could go a distance to deciding the NWCC this well, year. Well, you hit the nail on the head. This is week four, believe it or not. Uh, time is flying by, and the winner of this game is going to have a leg up on everybody else You know, as we get to midway point next week. You know, uh, Elgin's a team we don't know a whole lot about because they're from, you know, just the west side of uh, Marion. But uh, they're a, a, an opponent to, that can be tough to, to be reckoned with. So, But this one right here is an important one. If you want to remain undefeated in the conference, you got to get this one and take it one week at a time and one play at a time. Both teams unbeaten in conference. And uh, Waynesville Goshen undefeated overall. Hard Northern with a two and one record. And uh, Waynesville Goshen looking to keep a winning streak going. They've won 15, 15 straight regular season matchups. And they're going to try and make it 16 on the road tonight as we are getting ready for football action. Hard Northern won the toss. And they have decided to defer to the second half. So they're going to put the Waynesville Goshen offense on the field first. And, you know, you get the sense of this is going to be a more of your uh, ground and pound, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust kind of uh, football matchup. Well, it'll tonight. be interesting because Waynesfield's quarterback really likes to sling it. So it's going to be interesting. You know, Hard Northern uh, had them last year, Patrick, and they put a lot of points on in a shootout against Adis, and a lot of those players are returning from last year's ball club. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who sets the tone. And I think it's going to come – down to the front five on both ball clubs. Who's going to control the line of scrimmage? I think you're absolutely right. Drew Breitigam is the quarterback for the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers. He will bring the offense out. Jace Kaufman, Dalton Jordan, your wide receivers. Grant Breitigam at running back. Troy Spencer at tight end. Uh, Devin Klinke also at wide receiver and Carson Barnes. So a uh, number of guys that uh, they can they can put up the points. They already have this season. Um, and they have been pretty stout in terms of their defense as well, but they get started first. First and 10. And we get the handoff going right up the middle early on. That is Grant Breitigam going up the middle and he picks up six on their first play. Cruz, Cruz Curtis. Rowan Freighter on the stop for the Polar Bears. So officially they'll give him an eight yard carry on that play and it's gonna be second down. Mr. Freighter for the Polar Bears, six foot five, 234 pound defensive end tackle. Brightigam in the gun, second down and short, pressure coming, unloads it across the middle, complete across the 50 yard line and push back. That's gonna be good for a Kenton Moose first down. Yeah, stepped up in the pocket, planted that foot, spun a tight spiral in there, nice pitch and catch. Devin Klinke with the catch, the 5'10", 145-pound senior. Xander Wilson on the stop, along with a host of black and gold. So two plays it took for the Tigers to get into plus territory. It'll be first down and 10. Showing the blitz and the handoff forthcoming and going right up the middle. Probably Carson Barnes, number 16. Cooper Thomas on the stop, along with his teammate, Caden Gwynn. And stopped around the 45-yard line. So it will be a second down and seven coming up for the Tigers. Rolling out on second down. Pressure coming. Brightingham lets it go. And just over the hands of his intended receiver was looking for Chase Kaufman, number zero. Yeah, he didn't have much time. The right tackle got beat on the outside. And it was bearing down on. Sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. Hard Northern so far doing a great job on defense. You see him applying a pressure and uh, there hasn't, there's been some space to run, but when they've had to step back and throw, 
Uh, the Tigers have uh, been rushed so far. Yeah, what they've got to be careful with is pursuing these linebackers up to the line of scrimmage. They've sh shown some early blitz packages and see what Waynesfield does to go against that. Man in motion, and Brightingham is just going to keep it. Nice and solo not tackle. Get enough. Indeed, a nice solo tackle indeed. And he's brought down by Bo Bain. And that's going to bring up fourth down and five for the Tigers. Looked like Bain and Gwynn, apparently. Nice play. So the Tigers get a first down, and then they will be, we assume, forced to punt. Looks like they're going to bring yeah, you know, I think the punting unit, position. such as it is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, position they're in, I think they're going to go for it. Certainly appears so. Fourth and five. Might be trying to draw the polar bears oh, off sides. Good, good call there, partner. That appears to be the case. Yeah, he's going to burn the timeout. So he'll take a timeout. So a chance to get the polar bears to jump. But good day, uh, good defense, good discipline there on the side of the polar bears defense. And we'll have our first timeout of this matchup. Well, we want to let you know that tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends, that is the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. I can speak on that. I'm a member, and it's a great place to go if you like pizza before the game, after the game. This is probably a, a, a longer topic than we have time for here, but I've always been curious as to how you, why there are different animals that are represented. <laughs> Moose, elks, yep. eagles, that kind of thing. How that whole thing got started and, and how and how one gets to be a part of that. That's a topic that I can't answer you on. And we've got a... We have a horn going a, off. I'm not sure what it was. A horn or a siren or... Someone check your buggy in the parking lot. The oh, horn appears to be going off. They are going to punt. Unless they go to short... Short man. And we have an issue with the clock. It's just showing 0101. So we're going to step away, take a quick timeout with 9.33 left in the first quarter. No score here, WOSN. are back. I think we've got the clock issues squared away. Fourth down and five and we think our, or, uh, Waynesville Goshen is going to punt. They do. Nice kick. It's going to take a nice bounce and go out of bounds My around goodness. the five yard line perhaps. What do you yeah. think there partner? I was going to say five yard line. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> nice tight sp spiral on that kick. Yeah indeed. So Hard Northern will start from their own five yard line. Be the first time the Polar Bears get their offense up and going. And, you know, as we mentioned, the offense that the Polar Bears bring in is, uh, you know, pretty much uh, grounded, pounded, but they will do some things just to keep the defense honest so they can't collapse eight in the box all the time, make you think about the pass. Yeah, Hobson's really good with, you know, he towards the end of the year last year, he was throwing the football exceptionally well. But, yeah, like you said, they're grounded, pounded, and diverse with Coach Cooper and Coach Nichols now on the offensive side of the ball, and uh, they got a lot of wins between those two coaches. Nolan Hobson, the leading rusher for the team, also the quarterback, and find him some space out on that near side as he gets out across the 19-yard line before he is tackled. That's going to be good for a Kenton Moose first down. Yeah, really nice job, you know, turning the corner right there, running off the back side of that right tackle. Appeared to be Dalton Jordan there on the stop. Help from his teammate, Carson Barnes. Hobson came into the game with 233 yards rushing. Actually, the leading rusher is Carter Curtis, number 21. But Hobson is there, number two. Seven of 11 for 157 yards. And the handoff going to the aforementioned Curtis and bouncing off tacklers before he's brought down at around the 29-yard line. And that's going to be good for another Kitten Moose first down for the Polar Bears. Yeah, two things he did exceptionally well. He protected the football, and he just, you know, got as much as he could by banging off the defenders. Nice run there. The 
fresh set of downs hit for Hard Northern. Ball on the 29th, 8.30 remaining in the first quarter. And this is the handoff to Curtis once again. Nice patience looking up the middle, and he was tackled there as Jace Kaufman, number zero, held yeah. him down and waited for the other guys to help him out. Yeah, to mop it up, because if he doesn't get him by the ankles, he, he may have broke that one. Especially a pickup of three on that plate. Second down and seven coming up for the Polar Bears. Carter Curtis in back there with Hobson. Hobson is going to take it across the 35 to the 37 before he is tackled. Brody Roberts, among others, in there on the stop for Waynesville Goshen. Yeah, if you notice early, Hard Northerners dragging the big fella across there. Brody Hipscher, 6'2", 235, and basically he's turned into like a fullback situation, bringing him in motion and just pounding it underneath the center guard spot. Hey, get Dalton over on 14. Bring up a third get down and on one. On Probably gonna go over to that far side, they do, Hobson. Carries it and picks up a Kenton Moose first down. And just as you said, they make that movement. Oh, he's very quick with his there. feet. Yep. You know, he's a, he's a slasher. And then once he gets in the secondary, he's exceptionally quick. It's that Bodie Hipshire, number 87 for Hard Northern. You kind of get the sense that, okay, wherever he lines up, that's probably where the run play is going to go. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these kids are back from last year. On both sides of the football. Jet Siebenek was on the stop there for Waynesfield. Fresh set of downs. This is Curtis on first down and is going to be stopped in the backfield. Yep. Getting penetration there first, the I think, was uh, field. Brady Miller. Miller and Spencer, Troy Spencer. See what the preliminary indication is here. Perhaps in the neighborhood of holding, but let's see what they actually come up with. It was sort of a late flag. Something of a diamond huddle for the officiating crew. Chop block. So that's going to go against Harden Northern. We have a chop block against Harden Northern. So they'll mark off the yardage. It's a big one. Yep, that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. And that is going to be a lot of space to try and make up. First down and a cruise ship. We'll see if we get to see his arm in this series. So the ball spotted on the 29. They have to get to the Waitsfield Goshen 46 for a first down, but we'll see what happens. And indeed, you're right, Hobson. Oh, nice no, move. That's the pass, Hobson to Xander Wilson. And that's a way to pick up a bunch of it. Picks up about 16 on that play. Carson Barnes pushing him out here on the near side boundary. As Andrew Wilson got away from Dalton Jordan out here near side on the perimeter. Made a nice little spin move. Indeed. Like you said, that's a heck of a way to get the majority of it back. Picked Look. up 15, second down and 10 now. That's a little better. The hitcher goes in motion, and Hobson's going to follow him, but nothing doing as that line stiffens up for Waynesfield Goshen. Drew Cook, among others, in on the stop. Sure was. A lot of white jerseys. Good job defensively maintaining their lanes and assignments. So, ball in the 44. Officially no gain on second down, third down and 10 coming up. Might see the arm again here, Gil. Yeah, that's maybe a rollout. 
Oh, he's going to drop in the pocket. Drops back, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to take off, has some space, and is tripped up in the backfield. What a great play by the Tiger defense as Troy Spencer comes up and makes the stop, and it'll be fourth down. Sure was, because I'll tell you what, if he doesn't get him by the ankles, uh, the Wilson... Xander on the perimeter had his defensive back away from the, the play. He could have broke a real long one there. Like you said, nice play defensively by the Tigers. So there's plenty of green grass in front of him, but Spencer makes the stop, and it's going to be fourth down. And the Polar Bears will punt this one off. Something of a line drive kick fielded at the 26-yard line and out to about the 34, and that's it. Bodie Hipsher on the tackle. So the Tigers will come out for their second offensive possession. The ball spotted at the 35-yard line. Still no score on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. 3.57 remaining in the first quarter. Here between Hard Northern and Waynesfield Goshen. Northwest Central Conference matchup here on WOSN. Snap. Go ahead and take it. Four-yard gain for Breitigam. Nice open field tackle there by Caden Gwynn. Yeah, we got two really athletic quarterbacks in this contest tonight. So you see a lot of uh, quarterbacks like that in West Central Ohio. The teams that we cover, certainly the teams that we broadcast for you on WOSN. A lot of great uh, athletic mobile quarterbacks, and they can throw the rock too. you got to like the version of the RPO, huh? run pass option. <laughs> exactly. Right again, flush out oh, of the pocket. Oh, off. big what interception. Sean pick. Coleman. Sean Coleman coming up with the interception and almost he had, 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 had six. A, oh, yeah. He didn't want that one to the distance. Long and athletic, Mr. Kuhlman. Great pressure by the Polar Bears defense to force the, look like a rush throw, just trying to get rid of that one. And right into the arms of Coleman, and now the Polar Bears in business at the 35, just across the 35-yard line. Yeah, he did a really good job, job, excuse me, jumping that route. Just couldn't keep his balance. So now Hobson and company come back on the field. 3-11 left in the first quarter. First and 10, blitz coming. Hobson on the keeper and able to avoid a tackle and get back to the line of scrimmage and pick up a couple of additional yards. So good play by Hobson. Yeah, to... Bredigan really put the heat on him. Grant Bredigan in the backfield. Hobson was able to get away and get as much as he could on that particular possession. Hobson able to stay vertical and turned a loss of three into a gain of one. Just when we thought the sun was going to go down, it's going to peak back out again. I like the clouds to play a little bit more defense mm -hmm. here so we can see what's going on. Hobson throws that one high and will fall harmlessly to the turf. Bony you know, the intended receiver. As silly as this sounds, if he does not get his hands on it, that big tight end, that's an interception that may be six going the other direction. I think you're absolutely right. Incomplete. It's going to make it third down and nine. Hobson's already attempted two passes in this game. Came into the game only attempting 11, completing seven. But I think a lot of that is because Hard Northern's had some pretty robust victories. Well, very successful running the football. You know, why go away with something if you're successful? successful Hobson in trouble on third down. Shuttle pass complete to Curtis. And Curtis making something happen. First down and then some out across the 20 to the 16 yard line for a Kenton Moose first down. And talk about Hobson making something out of absolutely oh, yeah, nothing on that play. He was, he was going down. He was, he was very fortunate to get rid of that football. What an athletic play though. Athlete to athlete. 
Carter Curtis on the reception. Come up a little bit gimpy after that reception. Let's see how he responds. Basically a shovel pass. Spots the ball at around the 16-yard line. One of those things of, here, I don't want it. You take it. And yeah, great play, though. First and 10, Hobson Curtis fumble. Curtis getting it back, and that play blown up. The Tigers all over it. Well, let me see, there's 11 defenders on there, Patrick. I would say probably on defense, there was seven of them on, on the football. Great job gang tackling there by the Tigers. Might have been a little miscommunication on the handoff, it didn't really seem like the Curtis was secure with having the football. So a second down and 13. As we come up on the final minute of this first quarter. Polar Bears threatening to be the first team to crack the goose egg in the scoreboard. Hobson with the keeper going right up the middle. Picking up some nice yards, bouncing off some tacklers, but the numbers game getting in there as he is brought down for a game. Looks like about six or seven on that play. Good job up front by the Polar Bears opening that hole up. So that'll make it third down and seven in what will most likely be the last play of the first quarter. Gotta believe two down territory, don't you? I would think so with this uh, game being a defensive struggle and with how hard it has been to move the ball down the field for both teams here in the first quarter. Got to be thinking this is four down territory. This is third and seven. And uh, Coach Cooper's going to call a timeout. So down to 12.2 seconds remaining. And the WOSN Scores app is new and improved. You can download the brand new app from your app score. So you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WOSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. So all of your favorite NWCC teams you can keep up with. And even if you just like football and you're following another conference, NWC, WBL, doesn't matter. Oh, we it's have awesome. They have golf on there. They have volleyball scores yep. on there. Then boys and girls basketball. Yep. And there are a lot of people who help make that scores possible. That's not uh, automatic. That's not AI. That's not a bot. That is someone who is in there going, getting the scores, and making sure that they go in that app. Yep. So Did they go in the app and what on the TV set, on the scrolling at the bottom? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Shadowald has been helping out with that for a number of years now, making sure we have scores and information and a ticker and making sure all that stuff is, is yeah, on they there. They do a great job, just like you did on, on the Friday night show. It was enjoyable to watch. I appreciate that. Back to action here, third down and seven. Hobson passing, complete oh, out of bounds nice at the two-yard line, complete to Xander Wilson. And that's going to be good for a Kenton Moose first down. Stops the clock with 6.9 seconds left. Yeah, that ball was right there where he was making his move to the pylon. That's a big first down if you're a polar bear. I'll make it first down and goal. So think they'll run it. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Yeah, Garrett, Garrett caught me on one on a Man, I'm not psychic Tim or anything. Tebow's one oh. of those run. Oh, little, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little jump pass. That's oh, a possibility, yeah. too. Here's Hobson going to keep it himself and gets across, but they're going to mark him down just shy of the goal line, and that is going to do it for the first quarter of action. So we're going to walk 99 yards and one foot the other direction and wrap this one up perhaps in the second quarter as we head. It's no score here on WOSN. Welcome back to Scoreboard Tonight, brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 
Ready for the second quarter of action to get started. No score so far between Waynesfield Goshen and Harden Northern, but the Polar Bears are on the doorstep. Ball on the one-yard line as we get ready for the second quarter. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you. Second and goal, and they're going to try and just push this one in, and they do. Touchdown, Harden Northern. Yep, very safe call there. High execution rate, high percentage. You know, one of the things coming in, Patrick, a lot of people don't realize this is Hardin County Fair Week, and it messes with your scheduling and the kids showing animals and 4-H, and, and I'm sure that was a concern probably for the coaching staff, but it's like, you know, anything else, you just got to prepare and move on from day to day, and it's got to be a good feeling for them to punch that first one in here in the first play of the second quarter. Extra point is up, and it is no good. So the Bull Bears with a 6-0 lead over Waynesfield Goshen, 11.56 11.56 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. You see Darren Gilbert there too. That's Kenton Moose, 428. <laughs> And Kenton. Not every day. <laughs> He's not a feature. No, but not a feature. But you can see him there, there. maybe if you're, uh, if you're lucky. You play your cards right, maybe you can catch Gil the Kenton Moose. Hard Northern playing their cards right here so far, up 6 nothing. Waynesfield Goshen only giving up six points the entire season heading into this contest, and the kickoff is going to roll out of bounds. So that'll help the Tigers starting field position. You know, one way to look at it, I know it probably doesn't makes the coaches very happy, but you know what? The ball's not going to get advanced if you got really good special teams that can break big ones after big ones. So, yeah. So they'll place the ball at the 37 yard line, and that's where the Tigers will take over on offense. Right again in the gun, first and 10. He's going to roll out, looking to his left, and in trouble is going to tuck and run Ooh, and takes a big shot stick there. at the line of scrimmage. And maybe he picked up a yard, but I don't know that he picked up even that. Right to the line Alexander of scrimmage. Alexander Wilson on the stop. He got a little bit, but he didn't get much. Got maybe one. Looks like they'll give him a yard. Good job by the Polar Bears stringing, stringing it out there. Playing the passing lanes, taking away any opportunity to throw the football. Second down and nine. Bardigan back to pass again. It's going to go long, looking down the middle. Oh, and boy, got, got him. him. Has Jordan. Gone. Touchdown. What a throw. A 62-yard strike to Dalton Jordan. And just like that, it's tied at six. Yeah, it became a foot race once he got the football secured and he just ran away from that defender all the way to the end zone. Sounds like Jordan just ran a streak right up the middle oh. and Brightigan hit him in stride. And then, as you said, it was a foot race and Jordan won it. Yeah, it was a bullet that he threw there. It was There was no air under it. It was... Right there in his possession. And the extra point is up, and it How is, is good. Pay attention to that one later, folks. It is a 7-6 to six Waynesfield Goshen lead over our Northern. 11-02 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be back on WOSN. The Waitsville Goshen wasting no time answering the hard northern drive with a long pass play of their own. A 62-yard pass from Drew Breitigam to Jolton Jordan, making it a 7-6 Tiger lead. And that's something that Waitsville Goshen has uh, not done very much this season is trail. In fact, 140-6 to six coming into tonight, plus 134 in your 
scoring differential. That's that's really, really good. They spent uh, about 54 seconds trailing in this game, and that was it. So Hobson will come back out on offense after fielding the kick, and they'll place the ball around the 36-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears will take over. Colton Webb and Jace Turner on the stop right there for Nolan Hobson. So after 12 minutes of no scoring, we've had 13 points in one minute and two seconds. I'm doing a lot of math on the fly. You here. are. Just you are. Better, it's I better, very impressive. I better, <laughs> better pace myself for the rest of the game. Opson with the handoff. Look, they're going to run an RPO, and that one going nowhere. A loss of two on the play is Carter Curtis not finding anywhere to run. Yeah, Drew Cook did a real good job maintaining, using his hands, shedding the block, and staying in his lane and making that tackle. His gap, actually. So a slight loss on that play. Brings up second down and long for the Polar Bears. Hobson in the gun, three wide. He's going to roll out to the right, looking to pass. Let's this one go, and that is going to be oh, caught. Oh, boy. Complete to Xander Wilson, and Wilson making some guys miss. Makes a guy miss before he's brought down at the 25-yard line. Good for a Kenton Moose first down. He saw the defender. Thought he was going to be able to make a play and snatch that one out of the sky and just misread it. Yeah, the defender let the receiver get behind him, and that's a no-no. Good pitch and catch right there. Good job by Wilson just stopping, waiting for the football to come and try to get as much as he could after the reception. A long gain on that play flips the field and Hard Northern in business at the Waynesfield Goshen 25 with 9.47 remaining in the first half. Hand off to Curtis, gonna go back to that right side and right there is the Waynesfield coach of defense, Carson Barnes with some help I was on gonna the say, stop yeah. there. Yeah, that was one of them and there was two other ones right there with him, just couldn't identify the numbers. So able to pick up one yard. So Hobson getting the play from the sideline and comes back to the huddle. This drive has gone about 35 yards, and we're going to have a timeout as Hard Northern takes their second timeout of the half, and we'll keep it right here. You know what was, what was fascinating, kind of looking at this matchup, is these are both teams, these are both programs that within the last 10 to 15 years were really down. In fact, uh, you had a team in Hard Northern that actually didn't play football in the 2013 season. This would be the 10th anniversary of that, and prior to that, they had lost 29 of their last 30 games, didn't play football in 2013, and then they came back. They brought football back to Hard Northern. They promptly won their first game back, and now the Polar Bears have really turned it around. Then for Waynesfield Goshen, they did a story on them a number of years ago where they had 12 kids out for the football team, yep. and the seniors went door to door around Waynesfield and the surrounding areas. Oh, look what they did last year. Play. You and know, they went undefeated in the regular season last year. You yes. go undefeated last year. You get you make yourself to the playoffs and. It's a huge advantage now having 16 teams getting in each particular division in the playoffs. So tremendous uh, work for both of these programs to... To go from where they were at. Right. To restart in the case of Hard Northern and to keep going in the case of Waynesfield Goshen. Here's Hobson on second down. He's going to keep it going up the middle. He picks up some nice... Yardage out past the 20 to the 19 yard line. That's going to be about three yards short of a first down. Going to bring up third down and four. Jay Carter on the stop along with Carson Barnes. 
Got to believe two down territory here for the Buller Bears. And I said, as we talked about their last drive, we thought based on just the rhythm of the game, it was going to be four down territory once they got this far. And I, I, I think you're right, Gil. I think this is probably going to be the case throughout the game. Oh, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Hobson on third and three. Hand off to Curtis. Looking for space up the middle. Finds it. Gets a Kenton Moose first down as he is across the 15. Tackled by Spencer coming up with the stop there. Good job opening holes up. Brody Hipsher, Caden Gwynn, Mr. Bain, Cam Frank, Polizzi. Liddy. Not quite sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Justin Reffitt up front for the Polar Bears. So ball on the 15 now, first and 10. Bears on the march. Seven and a half left in the first half. Hops with the keeper going to that left side and finding a little bit of space, but not very much. Spencer in on the stop as well as Leighton Porter. Yeah, I think Bredigan. Grant thought he had him in the backfield. Went for the elusiveness right there. Good footwork. He'd have had him for a loss. So, so much of football is dictated by how the lines play, and you really win or lose in the trenches. And so far, it's been a pretty even matchup between the, the both teams. It sure has. There's Hipster going in motion. Second down and eight. Hobson oh, he's going pass com, uh, intended for Hipsher. They're on the rollout incomplete. Yeah, that's one Coach Nichols wants back. That's the second one they ran, the first one they overthrew. And that one there was down around his kneecaps. But yeah, he was open on the drag. I think the pressure played a huge part, though, in the throw that was attempted. And Hipsher is one of those guys that if you get him out in open space, 6'2", 235, mm -hmm. a, a handful to bring down, certainly. Here's Hobson, third down and eight. Pitch to Curtis. Curtis with space on the left side to 10 to the five and into the end zone for a Polar Bear touchdown. Big, big block there by Cooper Thomas, number 33. Cleared out that left side. Freed his teammate for the scamper to the end zone. Curtis with a 13-yard touchdown run on the pitch, and it's Hard Northern going back on top, 12 to seven. And we'll see if they decide to go for the two-point conversion here. Looks like that's probably what they will do. The uh, stadium yelling for one of the kids to come back in. Oh yeah. Coaching staff first, of course, but. I don't know about that. <laughs> could have been the fans that, that first. That could have been, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that, the aforementioned Curtis is going to take it. Oh, I thought he had it in. I don't think he does. Good He's job be closing short. there by Waynesfield. So Tiger defense closing in strong and preventing the two-point conversion. 6.40 remaining in the second quarter. It's a 12-7 polar bear lead here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose, 428 in Kenton. 12 to seven, Hard Northern on top of Waynesfield Goshen. The Tigers allowed six points all season coming into this contest. They've given up 12 to the Polar Bears. Felt like it was gonna be kind of a tall order to shut down uh, Hard Northern tonight, though, in any case. Here's well, they're, they're just so, you know, explosive in various positions on the field. Kaufman, oh, they got coming him. out late. Is yep, I think they got him for a late hit. Uh, Dean, you think you're right. Kaufman, with the return, got out to the 30-yard line, and then there were some guys that came in after. So I think they're probably going to add 15 yards to the end of this return, and that'll set them up nicely. Uh, 
So they call targeting. And as would be expected, the Waynesfield fans are appreciative of it, and the Hard Northern fans wonder what the heck just happened. See, was it a targeting or was it a late hit? They said targeting, yeah. Because if it's a targeting, you would think they're, they'd stop play about possibly how severe it is. I don't know how it works in high school versus college in a professional level. But anyway, that's 15 yards that Hard Northern can't afford to give up. Moves to the 46. Breitigam tucks in and runs on first down. Looking for that far side. Some space there. Gets across midfield. Dives out to the 47-yard line. And that's where they're going to spot him as he picks up six using his legs. Yeah, Bame got him, but he almost got away from Bame there to break that into the open field. Second down and four. And Brightingham with the keeper again has plenty of space, has a Ken Moose first down, and then some out across the 30 to the 20 to the 15 before he is brought down for a Ken Moose first down. Tackle made by, I think, uh, Carter Curtis, among others, was in yeah, on the stop. Curtis and Hobson on the stop there, yes. Nice run, wasn't it? Good execution, nice blocking up front, opening the holes up. Yeah. Waynesfield Goshen has been able to get yards in bunches so far tonight. I think that's their second or third play of more than 20 yards and now handoff on first down. Picks up about one. Carson Barnes with the carry there. Appear to be Freighter on the stop. Gwynn. All right, second down and eight. Brightingham a ball, oh boy. way back at Brightingham. Gets it at the 35 and is just gonna throw this one away. Well, he's got somebody in the vicinity. And he can't throw, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's a legal be play. An incomplete pass, so Brightingham with a great heads up play. As you said, someone in the vicinity. He someone was, ran to the sideline. And, and he, he was outside the tackles. Dunked it out of bounds, yeah. Smart head, a, heady a, football play. That's an incomplete pass and that saved Waynesfield Goshen. 20 yards, easy. Yeah, so, the official, or excuse me, the player ran towards the official over there by the markers. So it'll be third down and eight following the very wild incomplete pass. Brightingham is going the other direction to Grant Brightingham, and he's going to pick up a couple of yards. It's going to be fourth down. Justin Reffitt able to get his paw on the ball carrier there and trip him up, not before getting a couple yards there. I'm going to say probably about fourth down and six, and could be four down territory for Waynesfield Goshen as well. We'll see what they decide to do here. They have made one extra point. And it appears that they are going to go for it. With the ball at the 12, fourth and six. Maybe trying to get him to jump. Nope. Snap. Brightingham rolling out. Stops, throws, pass. Almost oh, intercepted. Nolan goodness. Hobson almost had the pick. Rather, I'm sorry, Xander Wilson. Knocks that one away, and that's going to be a turnover on downs in any case. So the polar bear defense stiffens up, and they force a turnover on downs. How far could he have went with that one? Uh, probably to the house. Ooh. Heck of a defensive play, though. He tried to thread the needle. So there was a lot of traffic, and as you said, Brodigan trying to thread the needle on that play, and... Probably fortunate. 
that that wasn't an interception because as, he, as you said, that was possibly a pick six. All his momentum was carrying him this way and towards the opposite goal post. Yeah, that's like the third possible pick six we've had Oof. in this game. We keep doing that. We're going to have to have a sponsor for it. This possible pick six. There you go. <laughs> brought to you by, I don't know, somebody. Here's Hobson on first down. Going right side and thrown down just shy of the 20-yard line. Barnes on the stop for the Tigers. Not a bad run there. Got you about six to seven yards. I was going to say they're going to officially give him seven yards. It'll be a second down and three. Makes that second down call a little bit easier play calling wise. 315 and counting remaining in the first half. Polar Bears with a 12 to 7 lead on Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. And plenty of time, one timeout remaining for Hard Northern. And here's Hobson with the carry again, looking up the middle and picks up about a yard, and that's it. I'm like you, I think he's about a yard short. He may have got to the 30, but I think he's got to go to the 31 and a half. I think you're right. So he's going to be a yard short. And it kind of depends what they want to get out of this drive. You think there's plenty of time they want to put points up. See how they decide to do it here on third down and one ball in the 20. Hobson under center. Blitz coming. And this is. I think he made it. Pushing the pile forward and getting the Kenton Moose first down out across to the 25 yard line. And that was. Is that Zim? Bodie Hipshire, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, give it to the 235 pound kid and. Let him carry it. Let him create some space or run through you, and that's exactly what he did right there. Host the Tigers on the stop. Ball, or clock continuing to run. 151 remaining in the first half. Ball on the 25. Hard Northern up, looking to pass. Hobson going across the middle, incomplete. Pass intended for Curtis. Breitigam in on the coverage. Yeah, he did a good job right there, putting himself between the football and the defender. I think Waynesfield Goshen's pressure really forced that throw by Hobson. He had to release it probably a little, about a touch quicker than he wanted to. Yeah, that was a real good job with the defensive pressure and the secondary coverage. Like you said, he had no choice. He had to get rid of it. Quick first half, huh? Without a doubt. Second and 10. This is Curtis. On the right side, has some blockers out across the 30. Where he's pushed out of bounds around the 33, 34 yard line. It's going to make it third down and probably about three, third, two or three. And more importantly, it stops the clock with 135 left. Yeah, this is where Waynesfield's got to be careful. Don't get drawn off sides by a cadence call. Just play fundamentally sound. Try to keep the football in front of you. Don't give up the big play. Hobson under center, third and two. Ball in the 33. Wilson in motion, going forward and second effort forward. got it. Indeed, that's going to bring up a Kenton Moose. First down. Right again with the tackle. Ball across the 35-yard line, and the clock will stop while they reset. Then as soon as they set the chains, the clock will start to run again, which it is. Yeah, Bradigan right there stepped up, made that tackle, but it was a full head of steam there by Mr. Wilson on that run. Might need to see the Polar Bears put the ball up on the blitz. Hobson in trouble, evading. The tackle pass across to Hipshire, pass complete, out across midfield, and 
trying Wood. to swing him down. That's not going to work. Ball at the 46-yard line, and it can't move first down. What's that they say? Chris Berman rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Yeah, because exactly. I'll tell you what. He caught the football and got his shoulder square and just bounced off those defenders. Got an extra, what, six, seven yards. Good enough for a first down. Plus territory now for the Polar Bears. Ball on the 47. Hopson to throw on first down and looking for Wilson on that play and overthrew him. And you thought with the time and the yardage that you're going to have to see Hard Northern put the ball in the air. They wanted to have a chance of scoring on this drive. And yeah, he's trying to go high percentage, times. get a couple quick outs, get out of bounds, not burn any timeouts. And Polar Bears with one timeout remaining. Keep everything high percentage here. Curtis in the backfield with Hobson. Second down and 10. Pressure coming, here's Hobson letting it go down the sideline and a pass incomplete intended for Sean Coleman, I think. Well, I was gonna say, like you said, either Coleman or they drug Thomas across the field right there. I don't know if it was for 33 or seven, but you know, the good thing is he put the football where it was not gonna be intercepted. Yeah, without a doubt. This time yeah. last year, he'd have threw it. You know, he would have just got rid of it. You know, you, when you have that attitude and you just wing it, bad things can happen. Yeah. Real smart play there. If your guy can't get to it, make sure no one else can. So that brings up third down and 10. 48 seconds remaining, and Hard Northern's going to have to burn their last time out. So probably not what the... Uh, Jerry Cooper wanted to have to do here before halftime, but Hard Northern's going to have to take their final timeout and talk things over with the Polar Bears on top 12 to 7. And, you know, in a contest like this, you got to think having that having that extra six points or seven points or eight points, whatever they decide to do this, if they, if they can get it and score in the last 49 seconds, is going to be something pretty big because, number one, obviously, you get the extra touchdown, so you increase your lead. But Hard Northern gets the ball back to start oh, yeah. the second half. Yeah, they, you know, them winning the toss and deferring is going to play huge, you know, go, going into halftime and starting that third quarter, coming out with the football. You know, regardless if they don't score offensively with this possession here, if they can keep Waynesfield out of the end zone, going in 12-7, you got to feel pretty good. So here we go, 49 seconds left in the first half. Hard Northern is out of timeouts. Ball on the 47, third and 10. Tiger showing blitz. Hobson going long and looking for Wilson and just a little too long, incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. We'll see what Hard Northern decides to do here if they punt and assume that Coach Shane Wireman goes into halftime with the trailing five. But I don't. Yeah, and the coaches, you know, the coaches, that, you the know. coaches can make adjustments. Let's see if Waynesfield comes after this or sets up a return. Wilson back to punt. It appears. They will punt. They're going to angle this one, try and pin him as deep as possible. And what a bounce. And Curtis downs it at the one-yard line. So an outstanding punt for Hard Northern. Yeah. That... And great fielding by Curtis. Oh, yeah, he, he, he waited on that. As soon as it got to him, he downed it. Big, big special team play there by the Bears. So interesting approach here. We'll see what Waynesfield goes and how they want to do this. Obviously, you can't just go back and kneel it. You don't have a lot of space there. And obviously, you don't want to get tackled and get two, give two more points to the polar right. bears, because then it's 14-7. to seven. Yeah. It's a completely different complexion. I mean, right now, what do you do defensively if you're the polar bears? Do you do you come after him? Let's see what they do. And Brightigam is just going to keep it. 
Got as much as he could, huh? Got got out of that end zone area. Yep, got a couple more yards, and we'll see how they decide to do it there. No timeout called. 23 seconds remaining, and that could just be how Waynesfield Goshen wants to play this, and they don't uh, they don't have to run another play, I don't believe. No, no. They don't want to, and I don't think they're going to. So the final seconds will tick down in the first half, and we will head to the locker rooms with the home team holding a 12 to seven lead over Wayne's Field Goshen. Polar Bears on top as we head to halftime. Third quarter coming up when we come back here on WOSN. Halftime activities wrapping up here at Hard Northern. The Polar Bears with a 12 to seven lead over Waynesfield Goshen. Patrick Campbell, Darren Gilbert here with you. And Hard Northern's gonna get the, ba uh, the, the basketball. I'm a little ahead of myself, getting the football to start with. And you know, you, you think based on the action that we saw, Gil, that it would be Waynesfield Goshen that was up. They had the big plays, they were making moves on offense, but somehow the Polar Bears are up 12 to seven and an opportunity to maybe put some more points on the board. They'll get the ball first. Well, they 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 bend defensively tonight, but they didn't break. And, you know, we coming in tonight, I was a little bit concerned about when you look at the numbers, both teams, was it going to turn into a shootout? And it's just the opposite right now. And I think, you know, the adjustments that the coaching staff's going to make is going to play huge uh, in this second half as we get ready to kick off. It will be interesting to see what those adjustments are as it has been uh, the Tigers for the most part having more of the, the big plays. They've had more of the uh, passing yards, you know, yards over the air, that kind of thing. But Hard Northern has hung with them and they've made plays when they've needed to, uh, both on the offensive and defensive side. And it should be a really exciting second half as we get ready for football action. Once again here from Hard Northern, the Polar Bears are going to get the football to Start off this third quarter, 12 to seven, Polar Bears on top on the Leaves Sanders Recipe scoreboard, and we are off and running as Hobson fields the kickoff and had a nice head of steam there as he's tackled the 43 yard line, so not bad starting position for Hard Northern. Nice return there by that young man as Polar Bears come out. Start third quarter, their first possession. Been a very clean play game, Patrick, on both sides of the ball as well as with the, uh, I call them hankies that the officials carry around in their <laughs> pockets. What have we seen? Maybe one or two. I think we've had two penalties. And we've seen one one ball that fell on the ground that was overshot over the quarterback for Waynesfield. He made a heck of a play to throw the ball out of bounds. But other than that, it's been really clean played on both sides. Yeah, only two penalties and I think only one turnover the interception earlier in the contest, and that's about it. So the Polar Bears back to work here on the 47. Hobson going to keep it on first down to the 45, and that is it. Grant Breitigam yep. and, uh, and Miller. Miller, thank you, mm -hmm. in on the stop there. Coach Nichols has been experienced enough. He knows what he's doing offensively. Coach Cooper, he's been around a long time. They work good together, and you can you can see on the sidelines they're constantly speaking to one another about what do we want to do next. And Coach Cooper is not going to wear the headset. Coach Nichols has one on. Here is the handoff on second down, trying to cut it back inside is Xander Wilson and. He is met by a number of tacklers there. Looks like Dalton Jordan, Grant Breitigram, maybe uh, Trey, Troy Spencer also in there on the stop as well. Third down. Yeah, real nice job there defensively by the white uniformed Tigers. Of course, as you mentioned, Jerry Cooper bringing uh, state championship experience to the sideline for Hard Northern, winning a title with Columbus Grove. Yeah, and I think Tim's ago. been to the state semifinals. Yep at Liberty Bent during his day. Third down and five, and this is oh right in the middle. Boy, and breaks race. a big one, and this one's going to the house. Touchdown, Polar Bears. A 52-yard scamper by Carter Curtis, and it's an 18-7 hard northern lead. 
Yeah, Coach Nichols saw something he liked in that play call and turned into a foot race and Curtis just outrun the DBs to the end zone. So we're going to have a point after attempt. Hobson's going to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. So the Polar Bears wasting no time. At 10.23 left in the third quarter, they have a 19-7 lead over Waynesville Goshen. We'll be back here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. We talked about Waynesville Goshen having the big plays while Hard Northern erupts with a 52-yard touchdown run by Carter Curtis, making it a 19-7 Polar Bear lead. Yeah, and you know what? I don't even think he got touched throughout that whole play. He just took off with like wind in his sails, man, and it just continued to carry, and he picked up more speed and got to the house. So now Waynesfield Goshen with the ball. Jace Kaufman on the return. And Good return by that young man. Stopped at the 34-yard line, and that's where the Tigers will set up for their first drive, 10-15 remaining in the third quarter. And you have to think this is, a, this is an opportunity where Waynesfield Goshen is going to have to answer, you would think. You don't want to get too far down to Harden Northern. No, and even so, being down the two scores, you know what Harden does best, Harden Northern does best, excuse me, and they will milk the clock. Yeah, without a doubt, the Polar Bears offense seems more than capable of uh, bleeding a clock dry, if you will. And, but now, Waynesfield Goshen with the on offense and an opportunity. See if they can do something here in the third quarter. And this handoff going off that far side. Grant Bright again with space. He gets a Kenton Moose first down out across the 45 to the 47. Sean Kuhlman on the stop. Nice run there by that young man from Waynesfield. It's a pickup of about 13 on that play. Moves the chains, and that's a great start for the Tiger offense. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the offensive adjustment they made. Ball in the 47, first and 10. Brightingham is going to keep this one out across the 48 to the, about the 48 is where he's going to be stopped for about a gain of one. Rowan Freighter on the stop along with Cruz Curtis. Gain of one. So the ball just uh, just shy of midfield. Now Drew in the gun. Back to pass on second and nine, and it's set. Pressure coming, and it's Rowan Freighter who reaches home with the sack. Six foot five, 234 pounds. Got those big paws up, took away the vision, and Got himself a unassisted sack. So Brightigam tried to stand in there and make a throw. And yeah, the coverage is really good. Yeah. Secondary coverage is really good. He had nowhere to, to throw it. Big play by the Bears. There haven't been a lot of opportunities for Brightigam just kind of be able to stand in the pocket and make throws. He's had to be on the run, mm -hmm. design rollouts, things like that in order to find receivers open, and now he stands in the pocket and throws on third down, pass oh, what complete. A what a catch, and that's going to be good for a Kenton Moose first down. Yeah, they even into Jordan a double team. Threw it right to the sticks. Big first down. What a gun. Pitch and catch. Bright again to Jordan. They connected on the touchdown earlier in the game. Yeah, he, he zipped that one in there. Had a high spin rate. Nice catch. Great execution. 
Ball just outside the 40 now, first and 10. And there's the handoff to Grant. Grant spinning around and then thrown down back to the 40 yard line. He's gonna get credit for the 38 yard line. Xander Wilson, big stick right there. Gain of two. Dalton Jordan bringing the play in from the sideline. 7.46 remaining in the third quarter. 19 to seven, Polar Bears on top. Tigers on the march, second and eight. Going up near side. Nice athleticism displayed there as Carson Barnes picking up an additional yards out to the 34 yard line. That's gonna bring up third and short. Curtis and Bame on the stop. For the home team, Hard Northern Polar Bears. Gotta believe two down territory, Patrick. I think you're right. Waynesfield Goshen coming into the contest with a 15 game regular season winning streak. That one in a bit of danger right now, trailing 12. Yeah, this is a big possession. They get, gotta try to get some points out of this possession. I agree with you. Here's third and short. Brightingham's gonna keep it. Has the kit moves first down and then some out to the 25 and tackled at the 20. Four yard line as that's Caden Gwynn in on the stop. And a Kenton Moose first down for the Tigers. Gwynn and Bame on the stop. Shifty little move there, left to right. Bright again getting, on, getting to show off his athleticism a little bit more on this drive as he has throughout the game. And he's going to hand it off here on first down and diving ahead is Barnes. Clay Rager tripped him up along with Gwynn. So he picked up four yards on that play. Now bring up second down and six. Two wide receivers to the far side, two to the left, man in motion. And Breidigam looking in that direction, has to roll out, pass across the middle, and caught! Touchdown! Waynesfield Goshen, Breidigam, Grant Breidigam, I think. All I know is he threw a dart, partner. He absolutely did. Breidigam with a strike, 20 yards to the house, and wasn't even sure if that was the guy that was <laughs> intending to catch the ball, but it doesn't Carter matter Curtis if it's six tried. points. He tried to get a hand on it. And by the time he got his hand up, the ball was buying. So closing the gap to six and possibly to five, Lane Steike to attempt the extra point, and that is no good. So 5.53 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 19-13 lead for Hard Northern. We'll be back. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. 20-yard touchdown pass from Drew Breitigam to Jace Kaufman making it a 19 to 13 lead for Hard Northern. As we mentioned, that was, I don't think we're, we're a little too early in the game for must have types of situations, but that was a drive where Waynesfield Goshen definitely needed to come away with some points and they came away with six. Well, and that also puts a little extra hop in your step. You know what I'm saying? On both sides of the football and the confidence level rises a little bit. Let's see how Hard Northern responds here. It was earlier in the second quarter when Waynesfield Goshen had their first touchdown and had not scored since, and finally getting something going. Curtis on the return for Hard Northern gets out to the 31, 32 yard line, and that's where Hard Northern will pick up. Yeah, I think Waynesfield was satisfied just kicking the thing into the ground there instead of giving Hard Northern's athletes an opportunity to possibly break a long one off. 
As that seems to be the approach on kickoffs for uh, both sides, really, yes, tonight. Yes, absolutely. A lot of athletes playing here tonight. We talked about that at halftime. Without a doubt. Here's Hobson handing it off to Curtis on first down and back to that side. That's the side where he found that space for the touchdown, and this time Waynesfield Goshen all over it, gain of, I'm going to say, two or three on the play. It's tough to see the uniforms, isn't it? Yeah. Miller on the stop. We were commenting on that at break that you get away too far away from these lights here in the middle and it becomes pretty difficult to see. The rest of Dola is shrouded in darkness. Well, as far as we can tell. I'm sure there's lights on in town somewhere. We just can't see them. Here's Hobson on second down and six and able to push the pile forward. Ball comes out at the end. Let's we'll see if he was down. He's they're gonna say he's down. down. Yeah, they're gonna say he was down by contact. So they're going to say he was down by contact. And third down and one, I think, will be the goal. Yeah, third down and one. Yeah, would have that been a big momentum, momentum shift? A turnover yeah. like that, especially yeah. after Waynesfield just scored. That would have been a huge play, but opportunity still for the Tigers to get off the field. On a three and out, third down and one, ball in the 41. Pull the Bears. Maybe trying to jump them off sides and then run a play. Hand off, and nothing doing as the Tiger defense stands up. Attempting the run was Curtis, and there were a bunch of Tigers in on the stop there. Among them, Jake, Jake Carter, Carter, number 75. 6'5", 290. He got his arms around him. He was not getting away. Him and Drew Cook, 6'2", 280. And you have to wonder if Hard Northern is going to go for it here on fourth and two in their own territory. And I think that's the case. It's going to be might interesting, be up, huh? Might be setting up trying to draw them off sides perhaps, but maybe they've got a, a place set up just in case that doesn't work. Fourth and two. Hobson going to keep it no. and does not get there. Turnover on downs for Waysfield Goshen. Yep, looks like he's short. I don't think they're even going to measure it. Officials are going to discuss it. It looks, I mean, it looks, it looks, I mean, pretty significantly short to me from here, but. Hard Northern is saying they have a first down, and I think we're going to bring the chain gang out here and get a measurement. But at first glance, it didn't look like it was even close, Gil. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. One side's going to be happy, and the other side is going to be upset. And it's first down, Waysfield Goshen. Big stop there by the Tigers. And I don't know how close of a shot we got to the football there, but it could not have missed by more than an inch or so. So the Tigers will take over at the hard northern 41, 42 yard line. First and 10. Yeah, Pull the Bears. Go, go ahead, Gil. No, go I ahead. was just going to say that's the break Waynesfield was looking for. A turnover on downs or a turnover itself, and they got the turnover and downs. So here come the Tigers, first and 10. A little pitch, flea flicker action. Bright again hit as he throws this one up for a grabs, and the interception is made. Flags all over the place, however. Interception for the moment by Sean Coleman, number seven for Hard Northern. And we're going to see what the call here is. I didn't see anything particularly egregious. Well, I, you know, was the ball even catchable? You know, the ball was right. the ball was short of the intended receiver. So the officials are talking this one over. And there you go. So we're gonna have. 
Defensive pass interference. So that's going to wipe out the interception and give Waynesfield Goshen a Kent Moose first down. Yep, that's a big that's a big play for Waynesfield. I don't I don't know if that was on Coleman, however. I didn't necessarily see. No, he's the see. one to intercept the Yeah, he the came ball. with the interception. It was the DB on the far side along the boundary. So the Tigers getting some of the bounces here going their way, and that will bring the ball all the way down to the 26 and give them a fresh set of downs. Counter once again, this is Grant. Nice spin move, able to stay up out across the 20 to around the 19 yard line. And a nice pickup of about eight or nine, we'll say on that play, bringing up a second down and short. Sure was, Gwen, Gwen on the stop. Thomas also in on the stop. They're gonna say seven yards. So he was just across the 20 when they marked him down. Yeah, that little Barry Sanders. <laughs> Here a wet move right there. Got him an extra three or four yards. Yeah. Got him away from Hobson initially at the line of scrimmage. Second and three. Here's Grant working that other side. Nice shifty movement there out to the 16-yard line, and that is going to be pretty close to a Kenton Moose first down, if not there. Yeah, Cruz Curtis did everything right. Turned him back inside, just couldn't make the play. That's partly and due to the athleticism of Waynesfield's ball carrier. Let's see if they're going to ask for a measurement. I think they are. So another official timeout. While we get a, another measurement, and of course you can get the scores of all the games in the area on the WOSN app. Download the new app at your particular app store of choice. If you had the app previously, like within the last year or so, get rid of that one. Download the new one and get up to date on all the scores and all the sports in the area. And that is a Kenton Moose first down for Waynesfield Goshen. We'll be a little closer to ball gets down here to this end, huh? Yeah. Quick third quarter, 2.16 to go. So the Tigers back in the red zone. Ball on the 16-yard line, 2.06 remaining in the third quarter. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the Tigers knocking on the door. Right again in the gun on first down. And he's going to tuck and run and going absolutely nowhere as the Polar Bear defense stiffens up and makes the stop. Bo Bame was in there on the stop. and Gwen and Bame. Yeah, thank you, Gwen and Bame. When you get your two linebackers making your tackles, that's, yeah. Yeah. You're doing, your lineman's doing something for you, your interior lineman. A loss of one on the play, second down and 11. Too wide for the Polar Bear, or I'm sorry, for the Tigers. And it's going to be Grant once again with the handoff, bouncing off tacklers and getting into the end zone for a touchdown. And we're an extra point away from the Tigers, retaking the lead. Yeah, what a gutsy effort by that young man, just willing his way to the end zone, breaking tackles. Finding that goal line. Grant Breitigam with the 19-yard touchdown run, picking up some yards after contact as well. And the extra point forthcoming. Lane Steinke in to give the Tigers the lead. And problems with the snap, Steinke is going to keep it. And let's see how this turns out. Steinke going left, has some space, and takes it in for two. Just the way they drew it up. 
One word for that, slithery. I'm telling <laughs> you, man, he, when he got that corner turned, he was looking for that pylon because I don't think he wanted to carry it. So sometimes life hands you lemonades and you make two points out of it. Uh, that's not how that goes. That's, 21. Not, that's not his responsibility <laughs> to run the ball, it's to kick it. 21 to 19 now, Waynesfield Goshen, a successful two point conversion, although not what they were intending on doing when they snapped the ball. And it's a two point lead now for Waynesfield Goshen, 56 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And you know, it's been a, a third quarter that has been back and back forth. And forth. Yeah, to, to try tennis to, match. I was trying to find something else besides back and forth. It's so cliched, but really, it's been a, a, a comparative explosion of scoring. It was 12 to seven at halftime, and now it's 21 to 19. Mm -hmm. Now the Tigers have flipped the script, and they have the lead. And you just think, man, what what kind of fourth quarter are we going to? Well, they're making a liar out of me because that first quarter I thought it was going to be low scoring, and here we are. Both you know, both ball clubs. We put a total of 40 on, and we still got. A little over a quarter to play. There were no points in the first quarter. Our first touchdown was with 11.56, 11.56 to go in the second quarter. It was a hard northern touchdown. And it has definitely picked up as we see another short kick that's going to be fielded as uh, Bo Bain just yep. jumps on top of it. Good eye. Yeah, smart hit. He played by that linebacker, didn't try to pick it up, just secured it. Well, you, you have your guys when you're coaching. Like you can, you can pick it up and try and run with it, and then you got your guys that you're going to fall on top of it. Yep. You got your securing possession and advancing yardage. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And Bain did a great job of securing possession on that play. So the Polar Bears back on on their own 38. 54.8 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and ten. And Hobson with the pitch to Curtis. Working to the far side. Curtis picking up a nice block there as he's put out at the 49-yard line. And yeah, I want to give credit to That was real close to a late hit along this boundary. It absolutely was. Cooper Thomas with a nice block there on the side, too, getting uh, Curtis about four or five additional yards. That's good for a Kenton Moose first down. Yeah, the big fella, Mr. Bodie Hipsher, not only blocked one, he got two. I think they just got Coach Cooper. And uh, Cooper probably making the case that uh, you were making about the possibility of a late hit. And we'll see what this ends up being, if this is maybe just a sideline warning. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he got his warning. Cooper got his, his two cents in. Mm -hmm. The officials gave him the warning, so... And uh, Coach Cooper still over there pleading his case. So ball in the 49, first and 10. Hobson in the gun, Curtis with him. Hobson back to pass, gets rid of it, pass is complete to Wilson at the 45. Going to pick up about six on that play. Nice pitch and catch right there. They really like that. The Pierce throughout the contest, they like that Xander Wilson matchup. Let's see if they go back to it again. Down to 44 seconds, second and four. Here's the handoff to Curtis and secured by Carson Barnes. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Third down and four coming up for Hard Northern. Yeah, that's a heck of an open field tackle right there by Mr. Barnes. And we don't have a play clock available around here in that's the stadium. What was, that's so, what I was looking to. Yeah, look on the sides there. That's where it's supposed to be on, but we don't see it, and it doesn't look like the Hard Northern is going to have to run another play before we head to the fourth quarter. Well, fist or four fingers, however you want to do it. Fourth quarter coming up. It's a 21-19 lead for Waynesfield Goshen. Pull the Bears on the march as we head to the fourth here on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose, 428 in Kenton. Fourth quarter action coming to you from Hard Northern High School. The Polar Bears trailing the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers 21 to 19. Patrick Kamler and Darren Gilbert calling the action in the press box high above the 50 yard line here at Hard Northern where the Polar Bears are at third and four. Hobson back to pass in trouble. Gets out of it. Spin move and dives for the what should be Kent Moose first down yardage. Boy they had him in the backfield. With his, with his elusiveness got him away from Drew Cook. So I thought they had him, and he's able to escape from it and picks up a first down. Got right to the sticks, didn't he? He absolutely did. How about this one? Sean Kuhlman, number seven, Hardin County King at the fair. Okay. Like, yeah, he do was, you know something yeah. I don't about Hardin County? No, no. He was, he was named the king of the Hardin County Fair. Oh, well. Congratulations. Ball in the 41, first and 10. Here's the pitch to Curtis. Going outside, but not finding anywhere to go. Brightigam, Grant Brightigam Ooh. in on the stop. Boy, does he have a nose for the football. He absolutely does. He's done a great job of carrying it tonight for Waynesfield Goshen, mm -hmm. and he snuffed it out right there as well. Be a loss of one for the Polar Bears. Yeah, you got to love the athleticism Waynesfield produces at the linebacker spots, too. You got some beef up front, and you turn around, you got quick linebackers and DBs. Yeah, without a doubt. 180, 190 on the linebacker core. That's a core. sprinkling of a lot of success. Second and 11. Here's Hobson. Back to pass. Pressure coming. And pass is complete. No, it's incomplete. I was looking for Curtis, and the pressure is getting there yeah, against this hard northern front. Trying to set up a little inside screen there. Good job by Waynesfield recognizing that. Yeah, this is one if you know hard northern doesn't convert on his third long, you gotta believe they're punted, but then their defense is gonna have to step it up and not let Waynesfield, you know, take some time off the clock and punch another score in. Third and 11. And it's gonna be a false start against Hard Northern, so that'll be third and 16. Appears to be on this left side, Patrick. So Waynesfield Goshen showed blitz. One of the kids came up and the Hard Northern side got a little jumpy. Third and 16. Ball at the 47, Hobson in the gun. Back to pass, throws, pass is complete at the 34, I believe. Boy, that's a heck of a catch by that young man. Good hands there by Xander Wilson. They're gonna give him the catch. No, they are not either, nope. partner. So they're gonna say incomplete. So they're going to say he didn't come up with it. So that's going to make it fourth and 16. And I would imagine this is going to be a punting situation. See what that was a heck of an effort to win that It catch. absolutely was. I thought, I thought Wilson had brought that one in. Kaufman back to receive the punt. And they're going to try and pin Waynesfield Goshen as deep as they can. That one's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback. Nice punt. So Waynesfield Goshen will take over with 10-17 remaining and a two-point lead. So back and forth, we have gone in this one. Hard Northern at one point held a 19-7 lead. Waynesfield Goshen has scored 14 unanswered. Yeah, this is probably the biggest series of the game defensively for Hard Northern. You don't want to let them milk some time off the clock. You don't want to give them first downs. 
Now you don't want them to score here, obviously, but you don't necessarily Correct. need to shut them down quickly with the time on the clock. However, you need to make stops. And you don't want to have oh, that. The ball comes boy. out, but flag comes down on the play. They're going to say he was down. It looked like his both knees were down before the ball came out. Yeah, he com he's coming up oh, gimpy there, but I'll tell you what, he's very fortunate that those knees didn't give out because he he got twisted up pretty good. And they're going to say horse collar against Hard Northern. So that's going to be an automatic Kenton Moose first down for the Tigers. As I imagine that was on the attempted tackle on Brightigam, and I didn't see Brightigam come out of the game, but you said he was he was hobbling a little bit. So in any case, a fresh set of downs for Hard Northern ball at the 42, first and 10. Three wide, Brightigam in the gun. Oh, nice and play. Not going anywhere. Nice stop there by number 33. That's Thomas. Cooper Thomas, indeed. A couple of these hard northern players I had this spring playing AAU basketball, Thomas and Kuhlman, and both good kids and work exceptionally hard. So the Polar Bears have had to put in quite a bit of effort here so far, and throughout the season, really. It has paid off. Hard Northern, a pretty solid-looking football team. As we said, this game, NWCC Championship implications, and this game has been every bit of that here so far. Second and 12 for the Tigers. Yeah, week four only, too. Yeah, exactly. Bright again. Looking. Throws this one. Has a man. And incomplete. Nice effort going across the 38-yard line there. Is Jace Kaufman. That was Kaufman. It was intended for. And that'll bring up third down and 12. Looks like somebody's, is that Xander Wilson coming up a little bit? Lame for the Polar Bears. He doesn't want to come out. I don't think Hard Northern can ill afford to take him out because he just means so much to the team on both sides of the ball. If you're hard northern, you got to like the position they're in right now. Just keep the football in front of you. Absolutely. Third and 12. Bright again. Has to get rid of it. Does. Oh, and nice play. Not by going anywhere. Maybe a gain of one, but that is it. And a great third down stop by the hard northern defense, and that's going to force a Waynesfield Goshen punt. Justin Reffitt also on the stop. Bain. Win. So both defenses making plays here and getting stops on third down and forcing punts. And a too high snap. This oh one's going to be boy. trouble. It just get down oh. and the ball comes out. And that's going to be a big play for Harden Northern trying to make something happen on it. And it's going to be Polar Bear football in the red zone. Yeah, that's, that's an unfortunate break for Waynesfield because the kicker, you know, himself, the, the elusiveness is not quite there. You know, normally you have, uh, I don't want to say more athletic, but the ability to be more elusive. And he just, it, that's one of those things where he could have just fell on it. But then again, he tried to make a play and kick the right. thing. And, but Hard Northern give them credit for, pursuing him and getting to the football. Yeah, and once the snap goes over your head, oh, there, yes. there's still not a whole lot you can do. It's no. Hops it under center, ball in the 14, first and 10. Here's Curtis with some blockers trying to follow him and is brought down around the 10 yard line. So a pickup of four, Grant Brightigam and Jordan in on the stop. He got four out of it, but that's four well-earned yards because they really had him contained and bottled up, and he found a way to get, willed his way to get those four yards. Without a doubt. 
Pull the Bears. Stroll up to the line. Ball on the nine. Second down and five. Got the big fell in the backfield, don't they? Yes, they do. Cody Hipsher with Curtis. Flag comes out as he is tackled at the five-yard line. And this one might be coming back. It, it absolutely is. Yep, I think they got a hold. So the penalty was at the about the nine yard line, I think. So they're gonna mark them back to the 19. That's gonna make it a second down and 14. If I did the math on that right, it's it's getting late. I <laughs> may not have the math down on that right, but I'll just say, okay, I agree with you. <laughs> second down and 16. That was close. You were close. Six forty-five and counting left in the game. Pull the Bears down two, looking to punch this one in. Hand off to Curtis, going off tackle on the left side. Gets back to the sixteen. It's going to still be a third down and long coming up for Hard Northern. And nice. definitely looking at four-down territory here. Nice at play there by Spencer defensively. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I mean, six minutes to go. Yeah, this is two-down territory. Just curious, they're going to try to run the tight end, the little tight end drag that they ran. They were, they twi tri excuse me, tried it twice, and one was overshot, and the other one was at his ankles. Opsent. Going to keep it on third down and gets out past the 15 to the 14 yard line. And it's going to bring up fourth down and eight. And we're seeing a, some change in personnel. So maybe they're going to try a kick of this. It will be Hobson as the kicker, I believe. I think that's what they're going to set up for. Okay. So that's going to be a. 30 yarder? Uh, yeah. 30 yard field goal attempt, which would give the Polar Bears a one point lead. Snap is good. The kick is up, and the kick is no good. Had plenty of leg on it. Absolutely did, but did not go in, the, in between the uprights. So, Waynesfield Goshen. Dodging a major bullet after giving up the football on their own 16-yard line. And they'll take over with a two-point lead and 5.05 left on Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Yeah, that was impressive, the distance he got on that. I'm not so sure that could have went 40 yards. I think it was up over the, the top of the upright as well, too. So from here, it looked okay. Like I think he made it, but... That's why they that's why they don't have me calling these to make sure they're good or not. That's why they wear the stripes, right? right exactly. I don't have the vantage point. And this play is blown dead. Got a false start. Be a false start against the Tigers. So first and fifteen coming up from Waynesfield Goshen. See what Waynesfield here decides to go to offensively. Ball in the 15, first and 15. Bridegam is going to tuck and run. Looking for some space, but not finding really much of any. First impact there made by Cooper Thomas as he makes the tackle. Big play there by Cooper Thomas, but you got to give a lot of credit to Mr. Wilson turning the thing back inside. Using those hands, keeping the offensive uh, guard off of him. 
So they'll give him a gain of two on that play, bring up second down and 13. 4.30 remaining in the game, 21-19. Wingsfield Goshen with a two-point lead. Brightingham rolling now to the left side. In trouble, gonna tuck and run and stand up on his feet. Out to the 23 yard line. So what looked like was gonna be a loss ends up being a, a big a six loss. yard gain. Yeah, that turned out of being disaster to getting the thing back inside 10 yards it appears. So Hard Northern takes a timeout as they're gonna wanna try and conserve some clock now. 4.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll take the timeout as well and be back. 21-19, Waynesfield Goshen on top of Hard Northern here on WOSN. Four oh six remaining in the game. Waynesfield Goshen with a 21-19 lead. They have the football third down and eight on their own 22-yard line. Chess match right here. Yeah, it's a, I'm not very good at it. I like to play it, but I'm not very good at it. Pull the bears. They draw up. Need a stop. Bright again. Going across the middle. Pass complete at the 36-yard line. Out to the 40-yard line. Could be good for a Kenton Moose first down. That is indeed. You're right. That is Carson Barnes, number 16, and a big completion there for Waynesfield Goshen. I'll tell you, he hung on to it because he took a shot from Wilson. That was great defense by Hard Northern. I know they give up the first down, but even better execution there by the Tigers. So there was very little room for error on that pass, and Breidegam zipped it right where it needed to be. Fresh set of downs for the Tigers, first and 10. That's a senior making plays for you. Ball on the 40. Here's the handoff to Grant. And brought down after getting out to the 44-yard line. Bame and Wilson. And Hard Northern takes their second timeout. So Hard Northern trying to preserve as much time as they possibly can. And with doing that, so the, the plan is obviously they've got to get a stop on this set They've got to get a stop. They've got to use their timeouts, which means when they get the ball back, you know, you got to believe it's playing in Waynesfield's hands a little bit. So they're probably going to have to do some throwing it through the air, you know, so to speak, and try to get the ball to the boundaries to get out of bounds. Yeah, a lot of time left. Yeah. Yeah, second down and six coming up for Waynesfield Goshen. And you got to think, you know, if they if they get a first down here, Waynesfield Go or uh, Hard Northern with no longer any timeouts, you wouldn't think it would take more than maybe one or two first downs. Sure or did maybe one additional first down, that they could really eat this clock up well, almost to the very bottom. Well, strange things have happened. You know, we've watched how many balls Tonight. go over the <laughs> kicker's head or yep. the quarterback's head. I mean, it's it's a strange game. Teams win and lose on special teams, and we've heard coaches say that for years, and that is the case here tonight. Breidegam stopped at the line of scrimmage, and third down and six coming up for Waynesfield Goshen, and we'll see if... Hard Northern takes a timeout. Doesn't look like they will. They're going to hang on to it, or maybe not. Timeout. So Hard Northern will take their last timeout. Big play there by Freighter and Jared, or excuse me, Jared, Jared's dad, Cooper Thomas. <laughs> so third down and nine coming up for Waynesfield Goshen. And of course, different schools of thought here. One school of thought is that you run it. That keeps the clock going. Maybe you make a first down, maybe mm -hmm. you don't. The other school of thought is, well, pass it, go for the first down, keep the clock going then as a result, and then you've got this one, I don't want to say in the bag yet, but you're a, you're a few steps ahead of where you were previously. Well, you're going to find out which co Coach Wireman's going to decide to, to run here. you got to believe it's going to be something high percentage, low turnover base. And if you're hard northern, you got to be careful and not over pursue. Right. Because we've seen Mr. Bredigam, Bredigam, excuse me, I apologize for that miscue on his name. We've seen him throw the football tonight, and he's through some absolute darts. He has 
Certainly made some big throws in this one tonight. And he's had some big, big catches by his players because those balls aren't easy yep. to catch. So guess works over, third and nine. Let's see what they do. Bright again, back to pass. Let's this one go across the middle. Pass is caught, still on his feet, breaking it. This one is going to go for six. There's a flag down at the 45 yard line. So we'll see what's going to happen here. And we've got a player down, down yes. for Hard Northern. Yeah, that was a heck, that was on the initial hit. It's back at the 45. So we're going to see what the call here is. And I think the player players down for Hard Northern was a result of the collision. I think it's going to be defensive holding. So it's going to be a touchdown for Hard Northern. I'm sorry for Waynesfield Goshen. We're going to step away and take a timeout here on WOSN. All right, welcome back. 3.06 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, Wingsville Goshen with a touchdown. The penalty was defensive holding. Extra point coming up. Which would make it a nine point Waynesfield Goshen lead. And that kick is up and it is good. So a nine point lead for Waynesfield Goshen, 28 to 19. And uh, we had an injury timeout uh, before the attempted extra point there. That was Carter Curtis, number 21 for Hard Northern, who was down and was motionless for a moment on the field. Later on was able to move his arms and legs, which is always a good sign, but they sure took is. every precaution, uh, put him on the board and made sure that he was uh, completely immobilized. But he did the, you know, the thumbs up thing, raising the yep. fingers uh, to let everybody know that it, at least right now it looks like he's, he's okay. They're going to take him, obviously check him out, make sure everything is A-OK, -okay, but we certainly wish uh, a, a quick recovery, a speedy recovery for him and prayers for him and his family as um, this yeah, moves forward. It got really quiet here, didn't it? It, it on did. both sides. And it did. You could have. Both uh, coaches were very respectful with their players and kneeling, and ev everybody in attendance here was quiet. And there's more important things than W's and L's. And yeah. it's about the safety of these kids. And it's good to see him, you know, give the thumbs up as they were taking him to the ambulance. So as we get back to football action, of course, one of the, the practical matters is Curtis was. Uh, a main cog in this offense for Hard Northern. So uh, with the Polar Bears getting the football back down nine with 3.06, it's a, it's a particularly steep hill to climb for them at this point. And now they're going to have to do it without the guy who's been uh, a major portion of their attack tonight. Yep. Yeah, and this is where it's going to be tough when your classmates and teammates and brothers have to get their mind focused back on the game of football after you know seeing something like that take, transpire. So the ball is secured. Cruz Curtis coming in and taking that out to the 26-yard line. So that's where the Polar Bears will start. And no timeouts remaining, down nine, three minutes to go. And this is definitely a score as quick as you can and kick the onside kick and try and score again territory sure, for the absolutely. Polar Bears. You know, next week, Waynesfield returns home to play North Baltimore. And the hardened northern polar bears will get on their bus and drive to Allen County and Lima Perry. Yep. Here's Robson on third. First down, I'm sorry. Pass is complete. A short gain, though, Xander Wilson on the completion. Only picks up a couple. I'm trying to see who that was that had the tackle over there. It appeared to be number four. Dalton Jordan. So that was Dalton Jordan, if that was the case. On second down, pass complete once again, finds Wilson. Wilson out of bounds, close to the first down marker. And we'll see if he yeah, somebody, somebody gets the first down. I think on. someone else got hit over on the yeah, Waynesfield Goshen okay sideline. They got up. Not a ton of space over there on no, there's not. that particular sideline. So that is Kent Moose first down. Ball on the 30. Robson flushed again. And takes off running and picks up eight, eight yards before 
He is pushed out of bounds and some late you know, activity. That's really, you know, I, I, well, I'm going to refrain from saying something, but it was a very overly aggressive play right there. So that'll tack on 15 yards to the end of the run, and that'll be a Kenton Moose first down for Hard Northern, and that will put them in plus territory. You know, they put a beautiful facility right behind here, Patrick, with an outdoor track and everything. And we got wind tonight that this is the last year of the press box. And they're doing a lot of good things up here in northern Hardin County. They absolutely are. I'd like to see if they can put a win up tonight. Some road to travel, though. Here's Robson on first down. Pass complete as Xander Wilson has stepped up. Here in the fourth quarter, and he picks up about five or six on that play. Good job using the boundaries right there. And Hard Northern has moved about 32, 33 yards, I think, and they've only used about 40 seconds off the clock. So can't ask for much better than that. Yeah, they're executing what they want to do. Second down and five, 2.19 remaining. See if the Robson back to pass, pressure down. coming. Wilson again on the completion, back to the line of scrimmage though, and that's it. Good pressure by Waynesfield Goshen too. I feel like they rushed the throw on that one again. Made the Robson get out of his time and have to dump it. Yeah, they, they forced him you know, to show his hand right there and had to get rid of it. You know, puts him in a fourth down situation right here. Fourth, no, actually third, I'm sorry. They tricked me. <laughs> Third a long five here. Let's see if they see what Waynesfield's doing defensively here. You got to believe they're going to take the boundary away. Hobson in the gun. Back to pass looking. Going to sling this one down looking for Wilson. And the pass incomplete. I think Coleman was down there. Uh, Kaufman, I'm sorry. In there on the pressure. And Wilson might have been trying to induce a pass interference penalty. But that ball was way overthrown. So last chance for the Polar Bears here, fourth and six with 2.12 left in the game. Here we go, ball in the 37, fourth down. Last chance it looks like for Hard Northern. Hobson dumps it, pass is complete to the 30-yard line and out of bounds for a Kenton Moose first down. So the sticks will move, the clock will stop. Yeah, good route running right there. Went to the pylon, or excuse me, to the marker. On the far side, pitch and catch for the first down and a clock stoppage. So still alive, here the Polar Bears are. A lot needs to happen, but Hard Northern still with a chance. Hobson rolling out to the left, first and 10, ball to 29, slings this one pass, incomplete, looking for his big target, Hipshire out there, second down. Yeah, he got a pull on, he just couldn't get it in with the other hand. Hobson comes in with the play. Second down and 10. Hipshire going in motion. Hobson looking, throwing, pass is complete out there to Sean Coleman. Out to the 14 yard line. And that's gonna be a pickup of about seven. A little bit short. Clock continuing to run. 144 remaining. Third down and three. 
Here's Hobson, quick pass looking once again, and miscommunication there, maybe looking for Hipshire on that play. Yeah, I think that's what Coach Nichols is. I think Hipshire's being yelled at, so <laughs> I think it was intended for him. It's almost like a hot route right there. So fourth down and three coming up. Polar Bears trying to keep this drive alive. Need three yards for the first down. 97 seconds remaining. Tigers looking to go 4-0 and here on the season. Winning their 16th straight regular season game. Hard Northern trying to do something about it. Turnover, but a flag comes out at the end of the player on the 10-yard line. And this is a big call coming up. And if it's on the defense, which it might be, it's since be there were, no, down it too. absolutely will be. So pass interference on Waynesfield Goshen. So a Kenton Moose first down for Hard Northern. So second straight fourth down conversion on this drive for the Polar Bears. And that is going to put the ball all the way inside the 10 yard line. Down at the six, I believe, six or seven yard line. Entertaining for the fan, frustrating for the coaches. Right. Yeah, the fans you have know, loved this game. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. The football fans have loved this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Uh, coaches, there's going to be a lot to talk about on Monday. Nail biting. Oh, yeah. Or tonight, depending. <laughs> Ball at the eight, first and ten. Hobson, back to pass is incomplete. Coleman hit. At the end of the play, I don't think it's so much the, the pass interference. I, I, I think it's the leverage that's being put on. You know what I'm saying? On, yeah. on, on the player. It, it looks like a harder hit than there should be, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly. And I think that's what the officials are calling here. So. So we're seeing that defenseless, defenseless receiver rule that was put in new this year. So that'll move the ball inside the five, half the distance to the goal. So a new set of downs for Harden Northern. And Waynesfield's Goshen is going to take a timeout to talk this one over. We'll take a timeout as well. 128 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a 28-19 lead for Waynesfield Ghost and Hard Northern. Trying to make it closer here on WOSN. Welcome back, 128 left in the game. Nine point lead for Waynesfield Ghost and Polar Bears trying to punch it in at the four, first and goal. Hobson rolling out, right side, pressure coming, gets rid of it. Going to be an incomplete pass. Pressure coming from Troy Spencer. Second down coming up. Good pressure there by Waynesfield, forcing Hobson to get rid of the football early. I know it looks as an incomplete, but it also saved the loss of about 10 yards. Saved the loss of 10 yards and also saved some clock. Good point, yeah. So he gets sacked there, you got to figure there's going to be 30 seconds run off that clock. Yeah. Second and goal. Ball at the four-yard line. Hops in the gun again, rolling out to that side, looking once again. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Xander Wilson, which has been his money man on this drive. Third down. Yeah, nice play by Jordan right there. Stepping up, getting his hands on the defender. Reaching around, knocking that football away. Hobson came into tonight's contest with only 11 pass attempts, 7 of 11 on the season. He has... He's thrown quite a bit tonight, He's got a lot more he? than 11 just tonight, that's for sure. And that's a tribute to Waynesfield and their, you know, their game plan. And 
trying to take the run, the running game away. Hobson on third down is going to try and run it, and the Tigers have a none of it. Dropped for a loss at the nine-yard line. See, Drew Breitigam was Jed Sebenek the, appeared to be. Yeah, Sebenek was there with the stop as well. So make it fourth and goal from the nine. Clock continuing to run. Pull the Bears. And Wainsfield Goshen's going to call a timeout. They yeah, want to make sure they're. A little confusion. A little confusion. You know, Wayne's, Wainsfield got caught with too many men, then not enough, and then they just decide to take the timeout. So a good timeout there by the Tigers because you, you you get a stop here and that's it. Ball yep. game is, is in, a, in effect over. 51 seconds left in this one. As we mentioned, the uh, both teams continuing on with their seasons as Wainsfield Goshen will move on. They will host North Baltimore coming up next week while Harden Northern, as Gil mentioned earlier, traveling to Brees Road. They'll take on yep. Lima Perry and the Commodores. Well, and you got to believe the big matchup for both ball clubs is going to be coming here on the 29th for Waynesfield. They actually host Marion Elgin. And, oh, and Harden Northern in week 10 also has Marion Elgin here at home. So... If this score holds up, the yes. September 29th could very well be the NWCC championship game. Still got business here, though. Fourth and goal. Last chance for the Polar Bears. Hobson, back to pass, scrambling, getting through, trying to bust that line, and still moving forward, but it's going to be short of the goal line, and that's going to be a turnover on downs as the Tiger defense comes through and gets the stop. Yeah, there's going to be some sore kids tomorrow morning on both sides of the ball. Without a doubt, this has been a pretty physical football game. We've had a few, uh, few bumps and bruises. One, one kid having to uh, leave in an ambulance, hopefully not serious, just as a precaution. But uh, you're absolutely right. There's going to be uh, a lot of ice needed after this one tonight. So the yeah, I'll tell you, he's, he's barely outside that end zone. They say fall forward and don't get tackled in the end zone. Then Smart play there by the senior. Yep. So I'll only have to snap it one more time, and Waynesfield Goshen will keep their winning streak alive. 16 regular season wins in a row. And what has been a hard-fought Match up here tonight in Dola. As we wrap up, want to thank our crew, Cassidy Driscoll, Megan Sherrick, for making sure that sounds like the video gets put on. Another great job. Another great job by you. Thank you. Same to you, Darren thank Gilbert, you. helping me make sense of this. And they won't snap the ball anymore. That is going to do it. Waynesfield Goshen. Coming off with a win, conference win on the road, 28 to 19, a essentially come from behind win against the Hard Northern Polar Bears, scoring 21 unanswered to wrap this one up tonight. That's going to wrap it up for us tonight as well. 28 to 19, the final for everyone. As part of our WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Gambler. So long, everyone, from 